This video is designed to help you start a hydro dipping business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's a hydro dipping business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful hydro dipping business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Hydro dipping is a business that you'll want to have an LLC or incorporate, if at all possible. Because you are dipping the products that people are bringing to you into paint, that dries as hard as an automotive clear coat, you're assuming a lot of liability. By creating an LLC, or incorporating, you'll be able to protect your personal finances should a customer decide to sue you, because they're unhappy with the results. Here are some other steps you'll need to take in the creation of your business identity as well, you'll need to come up with, and then register a business name. You'll need something that is short and snappy, to be memorable. Then you'll need to register your business name, with your local jurisdiction. You'll need to have licenses. Almost every business needs a license in order to operate legally. You will likely need a retail license, and your community may require a city license in order to operate. You'll need to establish banking routes. If you're planning on accepting credit cards, then you'll need to create accounts with payment processors. You'll also need a primary business account, for your accounts payable and receivable. Choosing a location. Because you are using a water transferring process, you're going to need facilities that are going to be large enough to dip the items that your customers bring to you. That means that part of your commercial location will need to become a dipping studio of sorts that is watertight. Not every commercial location will allow these types of modifications to a building if you're planning on leasing, so take some time to scout locations and find one with a high profile, regular traffic, and will allow you to modify the interior to suit your needs. Find a film supplier. What you are doing with hydro dipping is applying a film to the object that is being painted. The selected film will be placed into water and it will dissolve. From there, with the right amount of applicator, you'll be able to apply the pattern of the film onto the object and then allow it to dry with a clear, hard seal. You'll need to find suppliers for this film, so look at getting one primary supplier and one backup supplier for the materials at minimum. Make sure that you practice. If you haven't done any hydro dipping before, then you'll want to practice on some items, to make sure that you get the formula correct. If you have too much applicator in with your water and film, then the images are going to become blurry and run. If you don't have enough applicator, then the water is going to reach the dipped item before the film, and you'll wind up with a splotchy final product. Invest into copyrights. The films that are purchased from many hydrographic suppliers, are actually copyrighted designs. This means that you'll need to purchase access to the copyright before hydro dipping any items. Suppliers can set whatever price they want for access to their copyright, so the most popular designs tend to have the biggest access prices. This is in addition to the price of the film that is being purchased, so budget accordingly. Please note, if you use a copyrighted design without paying for access to the copyright, then you will likely be ordered to cease and desist all operations, and may be required to pay royalties, the copyright fee, and damages as a judgment order. Make sure that you have stunning signage. You can market this business virtually anywhere and find success. It's possible to dip golf clubs, after all, so there will always be a wide range of possibilities. What will make you stand out isn't your overall marketing efforts, although general marketing work is always important. What you need to have is stunning signage. When it comes to artwork, people are attracted to first impressions. If your signage is sloppy and looks like it came from a thrift store, then people aren't going to think that you can hydro dip some amazing graphics. Focus on that first impression with your commercial location, and you'll naturally attract people toward your shop. Find a product that really makes you stand out. With lots of people doing hydro dipping, and DIY kits being sold regularly, to find business success, you'll need to stand out in some way. That means finding a product that can make you stand up tall above the competition. One solution could be to secure a film that provides glow-in-the-dark hydrographics, on virtually any objects. Imagine have a guitar that could glow in the dark, that would be cool for a musician, right? Think outside the box, and then look for solutions that fit your ideas. The next part of the video is not specific to the hydro dipping business. Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the hydro dipping business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful hydro dipping business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, 
record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills and techniques if your business is to be successful. Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer with many employees and millions of dollars in equipment to the lone window washer with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills required for these two extremes are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face in your early planning will be to find your niche and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time is very good advice, but following that advice may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture so blinded by the dream that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service you plan to sell. Answering yes to any of the following three questions means you are on the right track. A negative answer to all of them means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service serve an existing market in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis For a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts about potential customers and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money in any business venture. The following questions will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no to any of the questions indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? 3. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan, based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable? and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports should be prepared and how to prepare them? Finances. A large number of small businesses fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs try to start and operate a business without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, 
unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? Must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available, to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses, on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include, your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses, and multiply it by 3. This is the amount of cash you will need, to cover operating expenses for 3 months. Deposit this amount in a savings account, before opening your business, use it only for those purposes listed in the above list, because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs, to the total expenses for 3 months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for 3 months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses, is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business, will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month, because of seasonal patterns, and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection, will show if the monthly cash balance, is going to be subject to such factors as the following, failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business, for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts, if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running a hydro dipping business, is a continuous learning process. Research your idea, and do as much as you can, yourself. But don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free hydro dipping business plan gift. Go to the description below this video, to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please, like, and hit the subscribe button, for more videos like this.